Hello, Michael here with another how do I render tutorial. This week we're going to be looking at cloth. Specifically, we're going to make some very simple procedural cloth that you can render with Redshift um, and apply it to pretty much any geometry. You can see that I've already created some geometry that has no shader applied to it currently. Uh, that sort of looks like a bit of curtain, I guess. Um, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is just open up the Hypershade Editor and we're going to go into the Redshift tab and create a Redshift material. And then we're going to rename that to Cloth and uh, assign it to our geometry. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is graph that uh, material out. And uh, we're going to apply a very simple bump map to it to make it look like a uh, cloth. So in Maya, um, if you go to 2D textures, you can go to the cloth node. And if we just move those over there, um, basically you'll see that you get this cloth sort of output. So if we wanted to input that into our material, uh, what we can do is we can create an interface between that node and our material node using a redshift bump. Uh, node. So let's just type in bump and get one of those nodes and then we can output the uh, color to the input and the output of the bump to the bump input on our um, <clears throat> on our cloth material. And um, if we take a quick IPR of that, you'll see that nothing's happened. <laughs> That's because the bump height scale is not high enough. So let's just chuck that on one for now and then you'll see that we get something that looks like this. So this is an ideal, obviously. Um, it doesn't look very realistic. So let's change a few things. Uh, first thing under the cloth node, we're going to change the gap color to be almost the same as our UNV color. I'm going to make our UNV color not quite, um, not quite white, but not quite so dark either. Uh, and then the U and the V width, I'm going to change those to 0.85. So it's just going to make each part of the weave slightly closer together. And then if we go while we're in the um, Hypershade editor, um, go to your place 2D texture node and you can repeat the UV. So this just basically repeats the pattern. Um, and it's generally with a square type t uh, texture like this, you'd want to repeat it in a square fashion. So if I say made this 50 by 50, you'd see that it makes it look a lot more like material now. Um, now obviously this isn't particularly exciting, the closer you get it doesn't look super realistic but sort of further out it doesn't look too bad. Um, and you could do a few more things to make that look a bit more like cloth. Obviously cloth has got a lot of roughness um, and cloth isn't necessarily grey so let's change it to say that in blue colour for instance. And let's reduce the specularity. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to have no specularity because cloth might have a little bit. Depending on its type, a wool will generally have a little bit of specularity, uh, but will make the roughness sort of a little bit higher. Let's sort of have another look at that now, and you can see that's starting to look a bit better. Um, now there's other, one other thing about this particular cloth material is that, as you can see, there's gaps in between the weave, and we can actually simulate those gaps if we plug in our cloth um, node into our opacity color. So if we just run that out color into our opacity color, the black areas will become transparent, uh, which isn't super obvious unfortunately in this render. If I make this light a bit smaller, all right, I can't quite show this as well as I'd like, but um, basically, uh, basically the light is in fact transmitting through. You can see it a little bit there on the render. You can also see uh, the light coming through and hitting the ground on the other side. It's just a little bit lighter than what it would be if it was completely opaque. Um, yeah, that's about as best as I can show it, unfortunately. But um, that will give you a nice curtain effect, obviously, if you're rendering a curtain. And you can also change a few things with your um, with your cloth node. So say we wanted that to look a little bit wavier on one of the weaves. You can do that by just increasing the waviness on one of them. The more you do it, the more wavy it is. Uh, so I think I've got a jumper that has got a weave that's similar to that. So we could make it look a bit like that. You could also make it look like chainmail if you have the weave going in one direction and then the length slightly longer on the, um, let's I think it's on the U. Uh, yeah. Something like that starts to look a little bit more like chainmail. Um, obviously change the color and the specularity, but um, that's just another example. So there's a lot of things you can do with that. Uh, so there is one other thing that we can do uh, to 
increase the sort of believability of our uh, texture we can drive the diffuse channel using something like a um, fractal for instance which um, will just vary up the surface a little bit so if you create a fractal texture which is just under the 2d textures in the Maya tab um, you want to run the out alpha into the diffuse roughness and you could run this into any um, any part of it that res that, res uh, that gets in that you can accept an alpha obviously um, and then you can just mess with the settings so by turning down the amplitude it will sort of soften the variance and you could lower the frequency ratio to make it sort of a little bit more um, relative to the overall size of your object um, and that's just one way to do it there's obviously a bunch of other ways you could actually do it with a procedural texture uh, sorry no, you could actually do it with a seamless texture if you wish obviously you could use a seamless texture in place of the um, the cloth texture node and just run it as a standard 2d texture into your bump map to create cloth um, I just wanted to show, show it using something that was already built in Maya um, just to keep it simple and accessible for everyone watching all right so you'll see that I have just switched to a sphere momentarily I'm just going to show you one last thing that you might want to consider um, when creating your cloth texture if we add an X gen description to it uh, so if we just go create new description uh, groupable splines and we'll just call this that is fine for this tutorial um, and then we'll get some primitives on the scene there I'll just do some quick grooming all right so I've groomed this very very quickly um, so basically I've just created um, if I go to the modifiers tab uh, just a cut tab a cut modifier and a noise modifier and all they're doing is they're just varying the length and the um, no and the noise so the magnitude is a little bit higher towards the tip if you're doing something like a um, woolen uh, jumper or sweater or jersey depending on which country you're in and what you want to call that um, something like that will look quite good um, and believable sort of at a mid-length shot um, you'll be able to get away with it you probably want to maybe make it a little bit less fluffy than that uh, but you'll also want to grab your hypershade editor select your collection and right click on your cloth material and assign it to the selection which is your collection there and rerun that IPR and then you get the same color you could also drive it with a separate um, separate material and then you could uh, decrease the opacity or you could drive the opacity for this with a a ramp or or a uh, expression or something like that as well but I won't get into this, that on this tutorial I just wanted to keep this one pretty straightforward uh, for people starting out or for anyone that was in a pinch and needed some cloth real quick uh, so yeah that is pretty much all there is to it though um, I hope this has been uh, useful to anyone out there that's looking to do something like this I know it's something that when I was starting out I sort of wish I knew how to do more procedural stuff because I was doing a lot of stuff by hand which isn't always the best way to do it um, though it's often a good way uh, but yeah if you've liked this tutorial make sure you click the like button uh, help other people find it and if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed as I'm doing two tutorials a week on all sorts of CG stuff like Redshift or Renderman for example um, and yeah other things by request so if you have requests make sure you leave a comment below otherwise that's it for now thank you very much for watching and happy rendering